So this video is about a man named Christopher Shaw who was paralyzed during a 2021 incident in Jefferson County. Now this video is for educational and documentary purposes only and it's to ask you after watching this video do you deem that the force used on Christopher Shaw was far excessive? too excessive? Was it appropriate for what exactly was happening? So throughout this, I'm just going to tell you the story that's in an article as you guys watch the video of what transpired. So the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office has released raw video of a June 2021 incident in the jail's booking area that left a Bowman man paralyzed. The video was released following the conclusion of a criminal case against Christopher Shaw of Beaumont for assaulting an officer that stemmed from the incident. Now, he pleaded guilty to assaulting an officer in August 2023, and October 16, 2023, he was sentenced to four years on probation by Judge Raquel West up to the 252nd District Court as part of a plea agreement. He had faced up to 10 years in prison on the charge. Now, in June 2021, when the incident happened, Shaw was being booked in at the Jefferson County Correctional Facility on the charge of public intoxication. While being booked, police and the sheriff's office said that Shaw began to resist according to file stories. Now, Shaw was thrown to the ground during the incident and ended up paralyzed. Authorities had said that during the incident, he assaulted a police officer and he was charged. In July, 2022, Shaw's attorney filed a federal lawsuit naming Beaumont Police Officer James Gillen and the City of Beaumont, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, and the jail's medical contractor. His civil attorneys claimed that the incident began when the officer had become agitated when Shaw lifted one of his legs while the officer was standing in front of him. Police, however, say that Shaw became very aggressive using physical force to push the officer Gillen inside the jail's booking area according to the probable cause affidavit. Now police say he intentionally and knowingly proceeded to kick Officer Gillen in the shin and the groin area the affidavit says. Shaw's lawyers say in the lawsuit that with his hands cuffed behind him and surrounded by three officers Chris did not have the physical ability to place Gillen in fear of imminent threat or harm and danger. For you the viewer what do you see prior to the officer flipping Shaw and causing him to break his neck in several places? He had nothing else to lift but his leg for this assault and this officer was committing on him. That a life-saving maneuver, said Shaw's attorney, Chance Lynch. So the Beaumont police chief, Jim Stingletary, had defended the officer in the past saying, we feel very badly about the gentleman who got injured, but our officer was just doing his job and wanted to protect themselves. Shaw's attorney says in the lawsuit that he never touched the officer. Now, the force that the officer used was a legal chokehold that you see prior to the alleged assault of him raising his leg, whether he made contact with the officer or not, Lynch said. Force against an individual is not supposed to be punitive. It's not supposed to be retaliatory. After the incident, Shaw was charged with assaulting a police officer. Shaw's civil attorney also say that the officer lost his balance and fell on top of Shaw after he landed on his neck on the floor. Shaw was unconscious and bleeding afterward and the jail staff then called for an ambulance. His lawyers say that he was unable to sit up or stand when the paramedics arrived and was then put on a gurney and taken by ambulance to the Baptist Hospital in Beaumont. At the hospital, Shaw, who was still unable to sit or stand, was given what his attorneys describe as a short evaluation and then released according to the lawsuit. Then says his representative to medical staff at the hospital was Gillen, who then put him into a police patrol car and took him back to jail. Once back at the jail, they say he still could not move and had been dressed in jail clothing by the staff. Eventually, he was placed in a chair but slid out onto the floor, his attorneys say in the lawsuit. His attorneys also allege that no jail medical staff helped him throughout when he begged for help. They claim when he asked a nurse to, for help, she told him, 
I won't help you until you help yourself. Shaw left on the floor and unable to control his bodily functions, soiled himself and urinated on himself, the lawsuit alleges. They say in the lawsuit that he asked again for help and his breathing had become labored. Lady, I'm going to die and it will be on your watch, he told the nurse, according to the lawsuit. His attorneys say in the lawsuit that when the jail staff finally called for medic, again, they told jail staff that his body was extremely swollen and he should have been taken to the doctor. You see a black man who is able-bodied, who worked every day to provide for his family, who walked inside the Jefferson County Jail and moments later is confined to a wheelchair. There is nothing that Shaw could have done that would warrant him to be paralyzed right now, Lynch said. Shaw was taken to the Christian St. Elizabeth Hospital in Beaumont, where he underwent several surgeries, and the doctors there found that he had suffered severe fractures to his spine, leaving him paralyzed, according to the lawsuit. So just so you know, I did edit this video down from its original version because I really just wanted to put in the parts that really showed what happened instead of playing the whole 40 minute video. There's spots there where it's just stagnant and it shows the same stuff. So I just cut it down and kind of just compounded it into a shorter version. So in this other article, let's take a look at what they're saying in this one. So in this article, it says, a hospital examination showed that Shaw suffered several spinal fractures that have left him paralyzed from the chest down, the lawsuit says. Shaw's attorney, Harry Daniels, said Shaw's life has been greatly impacted in a worst way. He was once an able-bodied young man before he was assaulted. He can no longer stand or walk. He is a prisoner of his own body. He spends the majority of his day in bed due to the fact that he doesn't have the resources to hire a full-time caregiver. Daniels also said that Shaw can't afford the physical therapy and treatment that he needs that could give him a chance at a full recovery. Shaw's attorney said that they've seen the video showing what had happened when he was booked at the Jefferson Jail on June 12th of 2021. We're here today to ask for accountability and also transparency, attorney White said. We're asking for that video to be released. The world needs to know what happened to Mr. Shaw. The NAACP Beaumont chapter and the Texas Rainbow Push Coalition have since been pushing for the video of the incidents to be made public and as you can see it has now. They believe seeing the footage is the right of the public. So to you, the public, the question I ask again, and please leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Do you believe that Officer Gillen used excessive force in controlling Christopher Shaw? Or do you think that even though Christopher Shaw was acting aggressive, it did not warrant the excessive force, if you deem it as excessive force, to be used on Christopher Shaw? So in an article with 6KFDM, Chief Jimmy Singletary with the Beaumont Police Department spoke with KFDM in the past about the case. He says that there's about a half hour video, including our body cam footage of the arrest of Christopher Shaw for public intoxication, says Chief Singletary. The footage includes his actions at the hospital where he was taken following their arrest for a public intoxication. It shows his resisting and being combative. That continues at the jail. He kicked my officer and I support my officer and my officer's actions. Now, Sergeant Tom Swope of the Beaumont Police Department released a statement to KFDM about the release of the video. The Beaumont Police Department is committed to the safety and well-being of all citizens, even when executing an arrest. Each day, police officers respond to calls involving people who have become a danger to themselves and or a danger to others. When police officers encounter these individuals, several potential dangers and challenges can arise. Some of those dangers include unpredictable behavior, enhanced aggressiveness, increased risks, risk of accidental injury, and medical emergencies. To mitigate these dangers, officers attend specialized training to learn how to manage these encounters more safely and effectively. The Beaumont Police Department goes to great lengths to investigate all uses of force by our officers. In conjunction with the District Attorney's Office, multiple layers of investigation are conducted 
every use of force to ensure that the department policy and state laws have been followed. This includes the case of Mr. Christopher Shaw. Mr. Shaw has a pending criminal case in the municipal court as well as a civil lawsuit against several parties connected to his arrest. All parties involved are entitled to a fair and impartial trial. In an effort to ensure that the parties are afforded this right, the city will limit its comments to the matters that have been resolved and are no longer pending before the courts. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office has issued a statement to KFDM Fox 4, the release of the video. So Texas opens records requested related to Christopher Shaw. Earlier this year, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office received numerous open records requests related to the arrest of Christopher Shaw. The requests were submitted to the Texas Attorney, uh, Attorney General's Office for review as per our policy. Due to the pending criminal litigation at the time, the Texas Attorney General's recommendation was not to release the videos on Christopher Shaw's pending criminal case. After additional requests and under advisement from Jefferson County Civil Attorney Kay Kennedy, the criminal case has now been resolved and we are to comply with the Texas Open Records request with a redacted copy which includes or excludes employees and other inmates not involved in the incident. So in another article by CBS Austin, the Texas Beaumont attorneys responded to the release of this video showing a Texas cop choke slamming and paralyzing a handcuffed black man. Beaumont police officers James Thomas Gillen is accused of assaulting and paralyzing Christopher Shaw, a 41-year-old black man, while in custody at Jefferson County Correctional Facility. Now, Jefferson County Sheriff Zena uh, Stevens released surveillance video showing Gillen choking Shaw and slamming him onto the concrete floor, paralyzing him from the chest down. Shaw's legal representation includes civil rights attorney Chance Lynch, Harry Daniels, and Ben Crump. Now, Shaw's attorneys released the following statement. While the district attorney has authority to allow Mr. Shaw to enter a no-contest plea that does not admit guilt, he refused to allow Mr. Shaw to exercise that constitutional right. Instead, Mr. Shaw was threatened with 20-plus years behind bars despite being paralyzed by Beaumont police officers James Thomas Gillen. Considering his current condition, Mr. Shaw felt that it was in his best interest to receive a deferred prosecution sentence, which will eventually result in all charges being dismissed completely. Let us be clear. We firmly believe that our client did not make any unlawful contact with the officer. What the video makes absolutely clear, however, is that Officer Gillen not only assaulted Christopher Shaw while he was handcuffed and in custody, he choked him, slammed him onto the concrete, broke his neck in several places, and paralyzed him for the rest of his life. Those are facts and they are both undeniable and inexcusable. Officer Gillen should be prosecuted immediately and everyone involved should be held liable for the severe and life altering injuries that Christopher Shaw sustained. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I was gonna put my own personal opinion in this video or not, but I've decided that I would. And then in hopes that of course, you will leave your opinions down in the comments section as well. So let's start from the beginning when Christopher Shaw came out of the van uh, by Officer Gillen. Was Christopher Shaw being aggressive? I agree he was being aggressive. Now when he was brought into the jail cell, was he being aggressive, meaning Christopher Shaw? Yes, I agree that he was definitely being aggressive as he tried to kick in the shin of and the private areas of Officer Gillen. Now, then that brings us to exactly what Officer Gillen did when he put him in a chokehold and threw him to the ground. Do I believe myself that that was too aggressive or using overly aggressive force for the situation, considering that there was a bunch of police officers that were all surrounding him? And could they have handled the situation differently? I personally agree that over aggressive force was used on Christopher Shaw. I think that there was many more alternatives to use to restrain uh, Christopher Shaw than him being thrown to the ground in a chokehold by Officer Gillen. Now, they said he was being aggressive at the hospital as well. What I am wondering though is if 
Christopher Shaw was taken to the hospital, as you had seen in this video, and then they bring him back uh, from the hospital. And then they're claiming, though, that there's these neck injuries. Well, why was Christopher Shaw brought back from the hospital and then is sitting there with his head to, tilted to the right side if he had such severe neck injuries? Now, as you can see, as you're watching it now, they've got him dressed and they're going to put um, him in a cell up until this point. But what do you guys think exactly about what transpired? I'm just kind of confused that if he was brought back from the hospital, back into the jail here, and then he doesn't have any sort of neck brace around his neck, but yet he had just come back from the hospital. That seems a little strange to me that, you know, that that had happened. But again, I mean, we're just going by the story that's been put out there and by what's been said. So in a, just a moment here, again, the uh, medics are going to come in and they're going to be taking Mr. Uh, Christopher Shaw away once again. So how do you think this situation should have been handled yourself? You know, so I'm curious about everybody else's opinions again on this situation. You know, regardless that Mr. Shaw was in the county jail, you know, that doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, was there the overaggressive force used on him, which created him to be paralyzed? That's the question that I'm posing to you, um, is if you feel like Jefferson County um, overextended their uh, aggressive force in this particular case. So in a moment there, you're going to start seeing that they're going to be taking Christopher Shaw. Again, the medics have came back and this the videos have been comprised about seven or eight videos, they had said. Now, again, I condensed it in a shorter format because a lot of it was just watching the same stuff. So I thought I would put in the stuff that was most important throughout this video. So there, as you can see, Christopher Shaw is on the floor, you know, with a neck brace on this time. And of course, they're strapping him in and they'll take him back off. Uh, to the hospital. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Hopefully you liked and enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you don't mind, that would really help out the algorithm. And that's always important to a YouTube creator that when they uh, make a video and they bring it uh, for awareness of cases or different situations going throughout it, you know, for all the time that is involved in creating videos, it really is appreciated when people can hit that like button, leave a comment in that comment section for us. With that, I'm just going to let the rest of this video play out. We thank you so much. You all have a blessed day and thank you for watching. It's a crime and shame.